Firstly, thanks for doing this interview and welcome to Australia. Um, first and major question, what brings you to Melbourne? Um, well, it started with, um, I have a Diamondback jersey and a JMC jersey. That's one of my first few first issues. And um, we made a decision to post it up online. Patty posted it. And uh, I think Nathan, it was back in November last year, right? And Nathan, I think, responded to the post. And then they started talking. And the whole Hursty, Hurstbridge show thing came up. And then Patty and Pete and Nathan started putting the whole plan together. So we came out to be a part of the retro Hurstbridge show. Um, who are the people behind getting you here? <laughs> Pete Ashby and uh, Nathan Gray, Glenn Ballinger from Bicycle Works. So you guys call them here? Yeah, we call that. She nicknamed them the mayor. The yeah. mayor. Yeah. Where did Nathan he has a personality that's bigger than life and can talk to anybody and just reminds me of uh, my father used to be the same way and i just said he's the mayor of australia and i nicknamed him that <laughs> yeah so that's how I, it's pretty funny uh so you've never been to australia before no i was um in the heyday from the 80s to when i raced for diamondback it that i ended diamondbacks deal in 1992 and so during that entire time a lot of the guys were coming and going from Australia a lot of my friends that I raced with but we were so Diamondback was so focused on titles and pro performances and magazines and you know just basically selling bikes not that we weren't selling bikes here but they felt that it was covered here with Eric Munns and his efforts with all of their riders the Mitchell brothers and all that whole program and so they were really confident in what he was doing here and felt that there was really no need for us to come here. Although probably would have been, it would have been better for me though. I've been cool to be here once before, but um, it, it's funny. I mean, we had that dinner the other night and I never really realized it completely, but the stuff that they were doing here, like t-shirts and like the golf shirts and stuff became really desirable in the US which was actually cooler than the stuff that we were wearing, you know, that they were making for us in the U.S. So we got a lot of that stuff, and that became a pretty hot item. What have been your highlights so far on your trip here? Every day. <laughs> Seriously, every day is like, um, every day is, it has its, its own highlight. Like, even though, yes, I mean, like yesterday we, we were with Danny and, um, how do you pronounce his last name? Yolton. What do we, what do we nickname him? Security. Security. Yeah. Cause he's a security guard. So we call him security. And so he's cool, dude. It's funny. Reminds me of Greg Hill. Um, but so yesterday we just kind of cruised around. We went and had a double patty hamburger at double patties, two patties, two patties. Cause because two are, they're better than one. Cause they're better than one. So we had, couple of nasty burgers there and then we hit the went to the market and walked around bought souvenirs for people that we don't know because <laughs> we've got a lot <laughs> and um and then we came back and we did we raced um Knox and winning you know there last night was pretty cool it was a redemption from not so much a redemption it was just that you know um I think people have an expectation you know, of a person and somebody that has been in the magazines for a long time that, you know, I'm almost 60. And you so, are? oh yeah, Shh, okay. don't tell anybody, honey, gosh, I have to pay her all the time not to say how old I am. Um, so I wanted to do really good last night just for, for me, but for the people that kind of were there to see it, maybe I had an expectation of something. And I'm really big into motocross, huge, huge motocross fan. And um, there's a video that, um, that I watch a lot and there's some stuff in it about McGrath. And he makes a really good point about who, when he decided to retire, you know, he was at his, he was at his peak, he was number one and Carmichael was coming in. And so Carmichael was starting to take some of 
um, McGrath's thunder. And so McGrath, he quit. He got hurt and he quit. And, um, but he made a comment like, you know, he races and he's okay with a tenth or a whatever, but the, his fans don't understand because all they've ever seen him do is do well. And so that always kind of rattles in my head a little bit in that even though I'm, I'm old and washed up as a pro, right? Not washed up. <laughs> as a pro, right? Right. Um, I just wanted to do really good last night. So it felt good to do good. So. Um, and the flight over, how, how did you cope with the 15 or so hours in the plane? It was actually really easy. Um, we stayed up the night before all night and just kind of prepped for it. Uh, got on the flight. We slept for, what, five hours? Five, six hours straight, solid. And we watched five or six movies that we hadn't seen, and it went great. The When we got to the three-hour, two-hour, one-hour, that's when we started getting really antsy. We're like, wow, <laughs> we're here. Yeah, you can, on your TV screen in the seat in front of you, you can have the, um, the flight pattern of what we're doing. So we had that on the way, whole way, and we're watching the clock tick down and the clock tick down. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it's like watching a pot of water trying to boil. Um, so stepping off the plane after being in the Californian sun for, for months to Melbourne's winter, were you prepared? We laughed. We just laughed because <laughs> she got on in shorts and flip-flops. I got on in shorts, a T-shirt, and I didn't wear flip-flops on the plane. I should have. And we walked up the jetway, and you could see our breath. And we kind of said, like, it's cool. No jackets, you know, and we're going, let's just kind of laugh. So we, we knew it was cool. We knew it was winter, but that really was kind of nice. And, you know, everybody kind of like, you know, weather isn't, a lot of people kind of judge their day and their activities off of weather. Like today we're going to ride, but we can't, which is sad because it would have been fun to ride. But, like, we went and did um, – what Wild Animal Park did security take us to? There's a local... Hurstville. Hurstville? The Wild Animal Reserve? Oh, Hillsville. Hillsville. Yeah, so we went there, and it was raining and cold, and that just kind of made it cool. It made it the whole experience yeah. better, so. honestly. And, and he kept saying, oh, I'm so sorry about the weather. Well, it just enhanced the whole experience yeah. to us. I mean... The rain, the cold, the animals, seeing them in their habitat. And yeah, it was good stuff. It was very cool. What was your, your favorite Australian animal? Um, well, we got to do the up close and intimate with the koala bear. And so we were like, you know, inches away from this little koala and it was starting to eat and move around. That was really cool. But I think the, the highlight was the kangaroos. Mine was the Tasmanian devil because a lot of people don't know he's the Tasmanian devil. That's he's a fan. And as I'm reading the description that when they get angry, their ears turn bright red. <laughs> it just reminded me a lot. About him. So, I love you. So when we were out anyway. shopping for souvenirs, I snuck a Tasmanian devil. He doesn't know it, but he's getting one. It has, to go. Home. it has red ears, bright red ears. <laughs> I love you anyway. I so. love you too. <laughs> um, so Hillsville was what the Thursday, the, the, the first full day you were here. Yes. Um, Friday was the retro race. What do you think of the, the whole retro race and how it was set up at the club level? Wow. Yeah. Awesome. I'm bummed. I didn't do well, you know, but that's okay. It was fun. It was fun to watch everybody else and to see the enthusiasm in everybody else's faces about what was going on that night. You know, um, Pete and that whole Bicycle Works crew. Um, when we heard that there was gonna be a retro race, um, the guys at Bicycle Works, Nathan, um, Arthur, Mike, Odie, and Adam, that's one guy, by the way. Um, they put together one of Nathan's HL Turbo bikes. And so that was, I got to ride one for the first time since 1984, we figured out. And so just being a part of it was somewhat 
overwhelming in a way that it took me outside my normal rituals, I guess, right? Because I'm very box-like when I race. I keep everything kind of in the same thing. I can tell you his entire race routine. <laughs> yeah, and that's um, not bad. It's just, it's just. It's, yeah, it's predictable. And exactly. she really helps me within that, that staging of the things I do because she's always ahead of what I need. And even though that sounds selfish or whatever, but when we go to a race, we go to do well. And so like last night's agenda was to do well. And so when we got there, we were kind of behind the whole practice schedule a little bit. Like we got there late, there was no practice. And so I was kind of outside my program and I got kind of frustrated at first. And but I reined him back in. So she slapped me around a little bit. And <laughs> Ears turned red. No. <laughs> yeah, my ears got really red, but I put a helmet on so nobody noticed. Oh. Um, but just be a part of the whole retro thing um, and the show, you know. Um, got a feel for the passion of everybody at the race. And it was just cool. I really enjoyed looking at all the bikes and watching the other guys ride them. Um, and then they weren't nice. Those guys weren't nice to me when I raced. That wasn't kind of un I'm cool, huh? Guy <laughs> threw me an elbow in the first turn and kind of caught me off guard. And, it was great. And then a guy rubbing beat, his race and guy Gary passed me down. I was in fourth in the semi, and guy passed me down last straight. I was pissed. <laughs> the to me, when I got there, just from a different perspective, seeing the fans that came out there and that planned their vacations and flew hundreds and hundreds of miles and drove hours and hours, some of them 10 hours to get here to see one of their childhood idols. It's very humbling, you know, as his partner, friend, mate, lover, you know, friend. It's one of those things that people don't, they don't see that side of him. And he was just completely blown away by... <coughs> Everybody who put so much passion and love and effort into making this happen. A Friday night in a Southern California BMX track right now is nothing like what we saw. And we took a bunch of pictures and took it all in. And it wasn't just you know, old school or retro riders that were there to see him. It was little kids and you know, the clinics, the coaching that that he did was just his way of being able to give back to these people that put so much into the event. his event and the experience and it was incredible so like last night we were at we raced obviously and we had some time to thank some people on the mic and one of the things i really wanted to say that i just forgot was bodie turner was there racing okay here's Which a kid just awesome. Just gets back from the Olympics. A four-year dream just ended. You know, all that. I mean, because right now, in his brain, as a racer, you're thinking four years ahead. Your brain is already on next year's Olympics. And that's mentally draining for an athlete to already be thinking about four years from now. And he was there at the event. He was there Friday night, and he raced. And that doesn't happen in the States. A guy like that at that caliber and that level they come and, and I'm guilty of this I do the same thing but I'm not at their level but I'll show up I'll ride practice I'll finish I get my work in and then I leave and at all the Southern Cali Southern California pros are sort of the same way not that that's a bad thing because they all have their own agenda and they all are doing their own thing based on their program but it was really cool to see Bodie there hanging out and on a local club event I got my picture taken <laughs> Thanks, Brody. <laughs> he was really, he's, he's a really cool dude. He, um, him and Jade, you, you know Jade, right? He's a, Jade McPherson? Oh, yeah. He's a local vet pro that kind of spent some time. So when I was riding for Supercross, I was riding a lot with Jeremy Rommel, who is probably one of the most talented guys on a BMX bike ever. Um, so we spent some time with Bodie and Jade riding in, in uh, Rommel's backyard, which if you ever see his backyard, that's 
you'll know why Rome is so good. Um, but so I got to know Bodhi there and, and Jade. And we drank some beers after we ride, rode for a while and had a barbecue at the house and with all those guys. And I got a feel for how down to earth Australians were at that moment. So to see Bodhi at the race was really cool. You would have seen a lot of Australians in your time though. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you know, um, you know, Wade Boots and Howie, right? Yeah. Do I think, did those two guys come together? No, I think Howie came a lot earlier than Wade. Okay, is that what it was? Okay, but Wade was the most successful Australian to come and do his thing and become a national champ, number one pro. And yeah, well, in the early days, yeah, you had your Warwick Stevenson as well. Yeah. yeah, but it was Boots before Stevenson. Yeah. So, yeah. So, kind of Boots set the stage, and then you had Stevenson and then Willoughby. And so, all these Australian guys come to America and beat all the American pros and win titles. You know, Morris comes over and beats the American guys. So... It's pretty cool seeing other other countries do well. Um, what do you think of Melbourne? Absolutely beautiful. We saw a lot of parts that most tourists, or most visitors that come over wouldn't see. A lot of the back roads, a lot of the smaller towns, not just the the city. The city is incredible, but to see you know how people do day-to-day -day business and life and I thought it was incredible. I want to move here. I picked a house <laughs> on a hill. Oh, you've big, narrowed it down to one? Wrap around, yeah, it was four the other day. Wrap around porch on a uh, vineyard. Right. What do you uh, think of Melbourne? I love it. I love the transit system. It's so, it's so nice. You know, we spend a lot of time over in Paris and they have the metro or the tube or whatever they call it. And it was, it's so nice to just get on a trolley and, you know, shovel your way down and get off and do that kind of thing. And just, you know, the atmosphere and the people and the country. And so I think I'm gonna come over and drive a dump truck. They make like 190,000 a year driving a dump truck. Uh, one thing I forgot to uh, ask about was the Melbourne bike ride. You would have got to see a lot of um, Melbourne that you probably wouldn't have seen as tourists normally just on that bike ride. Um, what are your thoughts on that day? Um, that's funny because when we ride, when I ride the street, I don't ride controlled. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, you, it's like the street guys, you know, you go ride and you go ride to express your emotions and your feelings for that moment at that time. And it's really cool because as you ride and you get into the rhythm of what you're doing, you get wilder and wilder and wilder. So it was fun to do the ride. We saw some rivers, you know, we went along the river for a long way and we got to see other athletes working on their craft, the people that row and, you know, girls, men, um, colleges, runners. And it was just really cool to be a part of that active lifestyle at Melbourne. And um, so it was fun. It was, it was just a beautiful ride. We ended up down at the, at the what do you call it, the Star? Mm -hmm. So we ended up down there and we had some beers halfway through the ride and some lunch and, you know, and then we worked our way out and um, we came across that street with, that they do all the tagging on. What is that street? Over your way. Did you ever tag on that street? Me never. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Professional tagger and a witch. Sorry, I just probably got arrested. <laughs> so we, we end up on the street, and there's a wedding. People are taking pictures. And one of the... One Andrew of, Shaw. Yeah, Andrew Shaw, who came over to show his, ni his 1984 uh, Harry Larry Turbo, which is absolutely stunning. Not Turbo. Turbo. <laughs> Ask me about that later. <laughs> uh, anyway, they, the bride and groom, they ended up taking these stunning, very artsy pictures with the bike, with all the, the backgrounds of all the tagging. And it was just a really cool experience to see things like that. It's just, it was the whole, you asked you know, earlier about highlights of the trip. 
every day just got better and better and better. And there's not one thing where I can say, me personally, that was my favorite thing that we did because I've just enjoyed it all from driving. I got to drive over here, which was awesome. Um, you know, you drove. I you drove last night. Yeah. I drove the securities car. Was it a struggle to stay on the right side of the road? No. no. I mean, you know, when we got here, obviously the first time you actually experience something new like that, it's a little odd like um like i was looking down at my phone which i do too much huh love you babe look up look up <laughs> so when i would go to look up i would see a car coming, coming this right way. at you and, and you're like whoa weird, you know, because i you know you look up you expect to see it here so but after three or four days of just kind of getting used to it and then you know um pete let us take his truck to mcdonald's or Mackers? Mackers. For some brekkie. Some, for some brekkie, and, um, which the Mackers egg and muffins are better than the ones in the States. And it was so cruisy to go do. Yeah, cruisy. I'm tipping it down the street, it's right? It's tipping it, yes. Down. We learned a lot of words. We're really excited. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's good stuff. <laughs>